we have mentioned these two celebrated papers uh, uh, by A. M. Friedenthal. Uh, these presented for the first time a set of very systematic arguments that are compelling even to this day uh, for approaching the subject of structural safety from a probabilistic viewpoint. Uh, he identified measurement uncertainties as a fact of life and put statistical variations of loads and strength at the center of the design process. Uh, he also had the intuition to distinguish between ignorance uh, and uncertainty which these days we, uh, we refer to as epistemic versus aleatory uncertainties. Uh, uh, Friedenthal uh, recommended probability based design standards that either enforced uh, the numerical values of the target reliability explicitly against both collapse and serviceability or, or indirectly by minimizing uh, quote the sum of the cost of the structure and the probable cost of failure or of unserviceability so in other words uh, the expected cost of failure and then uh, he also concluded that this target reliability should depend on the importance and cost of the structure as well as on the consequences and cost of failure and he made a clear distinction between life safety and serviceability targets and uh, in the end he he suggested a compromise uh, that would become known as the calibration of target reliabilities uh, when the first reliability based structural design codes uh, were to be developed and published uh, about two decades later. So, so reliability was itself was a nascent discipline at that time. Uh, the imperative of cheap mass production uh, in the post second war uh, economy was about to initiate an explosive growth uh, of, of the subject. And uh, but unlike the mass produced consumer items whose failure data uh, were plentiful and cheaply available, uh, the, the structural engineers faced a more daunting task uh, in that it was not easy to replicate within labs uh, inexpensive identical products failing under accelerated test conditions. Uh, building collapse, as we have said many times, was thankfully rare, so that a frequentist interpretation of probability of structural failure was not practical, um, and uh, the mechanics of structures near collapse uh, were complicated and challenging to model. As a compensation, however, what was becoming available to uh, the civil engineering profession uh, as early as uh, the 1960s was more statistical data on natural hazards, material properties and modeling uncertainties and in hindsight a collection of brilliant scientists and engineers interested in the subject and thus in spite of structural reliability in many ways posing uh, more challenging problems uh, than say mechatronic reliability the discipline saw rapid and path-breaking advances uh, in the 1960s and, and 70s not only in academic research uh, but in professional practice as well. And these far-reaching and lasting outcome was a new generation uh, of reliability-based structural design uh, load combinations and design codes uh, that were made possible by the pioneering contribution led by uh, eminent personalities such as George Winter, uh, T.V. Gallimbos and young researchers like Cornell, Moses, Rosenbluth, Esteva, Ravindra, Ellingwood, McGregor, Lind and many others. Uh, the ISO 2394 general principles on reliability for structures uh, came into existence uh, in 1973 and it underwent three subsequent revisions, the most recent being 2015. Uh, one of the earliest reliability-based structural design codes in the world was the Canadian standard S16.1 uh, of 1974 for limited design of steel structures. And at the end of 1975, 
the Ontario Ministry of Transportation and Communications decided to develop a probability-based code for limit design uh, of Ontario's highway bridges. And the first edition of uh, OHBDC, the Ontario Highway Bridge Design Code, was released in 1978. And its Subsequent revision uh, OHBDC 91 was replaced by the national standard CSA S6-00 in 2000. In the United States, uh, the traditional ASD, the allowable stress design method, uh, gave way to the reliability-based AISC load and resistance factor design, LRFD, uh, specifications uh, first published in 1986. Uh, most most recent revision uh, is 2016 uh, and these were based on the load factors and load combinations given in ANSI standard A58.1 which came out in 1982 and the name of the standard was changed to AACE7 in 1988 and which underwent six more revisions uh, the most recent one in 2016. Uh, for the design of concrete structures uh, ACI 318's journey to become reliability based took longer. Uh, although ACI adopted uh, the ultimate design philosophy uh, uh, early enough in 1971 uh, and relegated WSD, uh, working stress design, to an appendix in 1977, uh, it took ACI uh, 18 more years, uh, that is in 1995, uh, to adopt the probability-based AAC 7-92 uh, load combinations uh, and load factors which they put in Appendix C and the accompanying strength reduction factors in ACI 318-95 uh, uh, was were not reliability-based in the beginning. It took another seven years to complete the process. So uh, in uh, ACI 318-02, the load factors were matched to AC 7-98 and the strength factors were calibrated to appropriate target reliability. So that was how ACI 318 became fully reliability based. Now the idea of adopting reliability based design standards uh, spread to industries and countries around the world uh, beyond those of North America uh, in 1988. Uh, the Transportation Research Board uh, uh, in DC commissioned NCHRP Project 12-33, uh, which resulted in the publication of ASHTO LRFD Highway Bridge Design specifications in 1994. Uh, the, the ship and offshore industry was also quick to adopt reliability-based uh, structural design standards. Uh, the uh, Det uh, Norske Veritas, the, the, the Norwegian Classification Society, uh, published its classification notes 30.6 on reliability of marine structures in 1992. Uh, API brought out uh, the draft LRFD uh, standard in 1989 uh, for the design of fixed offshore platforms uh, and then adopted the final version in 1993. Uh, following the uh, 1994 North Ridge earthquake uh, in response to the performance problems discovered in welded steel moment frame connections. Uh, the SSE joint venture which was formed by the Structural Engineering Association of California, the Applied Technology Council and California Universities for Research in Earthquake Engineering, Curie, uh, they developed the FEMA 350 standard and set um, and a set of companion uh, documents in year 2000 uh, as a supplement to the 1997 FEMA 302 uh, provisions for seismic regulations for new buildings and other structures. Um, so these were all all reliability based uh, and they were calibrated to acceptable probabilities of failure uh, of multiple performance levels and we saw these a few of these uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, now the European pan-national standard, the Eurocodes, uh, uh, EN 1990 uh, came out in 2002 and then there were subsequent revisions uh, and uh, with 
about nine companions, EN 1991 through EN 1999, and these were entirely reliability based. And uh, we are going to actually look at these in detail uh, in uh, later on in this lecture. And obviously, more and more recent codes have come out in the world, and uh, whether it be the GSA, the General Service Administration, uh, the Mexican codes, the Japanese codes, the British standards, uh, the Australian codes, the Brazilian codes, uh, they are all reliability based. 